page three, and page four is going to be blank because I only gave it three pages. Okay, so far so good, but now here's the problem, I, as I see it. That's why I'm not a big fan of this. Remember I told it full stuff with yellow paper from the mm -hmm. bypass tray? Mm -hmm. This is a representation of paper in general. This is not going to turn yellow to let me know what knows to do that. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Second thing is this is a color screen, so I would see color images on here, but there's no way when I see the extra red on here to know that it's really going to print it out the exact same color. You know when you look at your computer yeah. monitor, you yeah. see a color, you go, oh, that's nice, but yeah. then when you see the printout, it's always off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, same okay. thing here. That's why I prefer the printout method, because now I see what it's really going to do. The third thing is, it's very difficult to go in here and really make any changes, okay? It's almost easier just to start over again. So that's what it's leading you to now. I want to show you how to delete a job. Let's pretend I put in a bunch of papers here. I make some settings. I push start. Halfway through, I go, oh my gosh, I'm copying the wrong thing. So here's what you do. First you push stop, let the machine stop, and now you want to clear the job, you want to delete it. Over here on the left is your job list. The most current job it's working on is always at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. It says print wait because it's waiting for me to tell it what to do. I highlight it, it turns green, and there's a delete button right there. Oh. Are you sure you want to delete this? Delete. Yeah, that's nice. And now it's gone. Yeah. Okay. All right, my settings are still there. I'm not going to do this, but my settings are still there. I put my papers in. I push proof copy. This time I would choose print, and then it would print out the first of the 25, and that's better. Now I would see the special yellow paper. I get a chance to really look at the red, double side of all my other settings, and I'm a happy guy. And then there's a way for me to tell the machine, yeah, go ahead and do the rest. And my pr proof copy would be the first of the 25, so we'd do 24 more. Mm -hmm. And there's also a way I could go in. There's a button that would appear that says change settings. So in this mode, I could go in and change a couple of things as well. Okay? Like from single sided back to double sided, those kinds of things. All right, that's the overview and proof copy. Start button. As long as this is blue, you are good to go. If it's orange for some reason, it'll tell you right at the top of the screen what's going on. Just follow those instructions. Number keys how many copies or how many mm -hmm. sets. We know the reset button resets everything. The clear key will erase or will reset mm -hmm. rather the number only, but it leaves mm -hmm. everything else alone. So clear key resets the number only. Okay. Don't worry about access button, you won't need it right now. Accessibility, I won't show you, just to let you know. A couple of settings in there, uh, for example, you have the quiet library and the beeps are too loud, you can go in there and make those beeps softer or turn them off if you want. And there's also a setting in there for resetting this touch screen. After a year or so, sometimes these little small buttons aren't quite as sensitive, you have to push above or below it, so that's time to reset the touch screen. Don't worry about it right now. If I showed it to you, just forget it. <laughs> That'll be a time. And you know what? The guy is going to come around and hand in, handle the machines. I'm sure he'll know how to do all that stuff. Too. That's part of, is that part of me? That's going to be part of his maintenance. Yeah, but uh, that's okay. it. But in large display, this is useful for your patrons. Okay, those of us wearing glasses, okay. easier to see, yeah. Yeah. easier to use. Yeah. The only thing to be aware of, we have these peripheral buttons at the very top oh. and the very bottom, and they do not show up in this first screen because we simply don't have room for anything. Mm -hmm. But I believe most of those, or some of those, show up when you go in to choose other details, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Guidance, don't worry about that. Just a little help feature. You can go in and it just gives you a little sentence or a paragraph about different topics. What really is going to help you is this here. That comes mm -hmm. with the machine. Well, this is not for your patrons so much as for you guys. <laughs> Did you write it in English? Quick guide, yeah, it was in, in, in English. Today <laughs> <laughs> people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's only 150 pages or so, so it's a little light reading at lunch. Okay, but you'll find this <laughs> very helpful. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. Speaking of languages, I'm glad you brought that up. Language setting right here. Let's touch this. Okay. These are the six languages it uses right now. What's going to happen is they're going to add Chinese mm -hmm. and I believe Russian and one of these other languages, oh. either like oh, maybe a, a German or French or yeah. Italian is going to go away, but they're adding Chinese and Russian. Okay? So always, I could go here and tell it, okay, we're going to go with Italiano now, so now everything's in Italian. All right. But except for language setting, that stays in English. And if you need to reset it, English is always in the upper left. Okay, it'll be easy to spot there. Okay. All right. <coughs> By the way, when a patron is done, they push the button and they, they, they retrieve their card. The next person who puts their card in, this res, uh, res, resets itself. Okay. All these settings yeah. go back, okay. including the language setting back to English. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Question: uh, yes, When the person uses their card reader, when the, when the job is, automat is automatically finished, 
the card immediately comes out the reader or yeah. no you have to push the button under okay. it on the reader okay. to eject the card okay. because it says yeah. it figures maybe you want to do something else so okay. the card yeah. just sits yeah. in there. Right. That'll be a question. They always you know where do I get my card? Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, I want to tell you why I'm thinking of it. Uh, wireless, mm -hmm. you're going to have wireless capabilities so somebody can mm -hmm. bring in their laptop, mm -hmm. open it up, they connect to the network here and they can print from their computer to your machine. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be available. Yeah. No, well, but patrons you still need a, uh, oh, still need a card. For the, well, you know what? That's a great, great question. I am unclear as to how they're mm -hmm. going to get charged if they're using, doing it wirelessly. So mm -hmm. they just told me last night that's a feature that's going to be added. But exactly how it's going to work, I'm not quite sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, patrons are not, are not going to have access. Are they going to have access to mode memory? I mean, you yeah. said these, they will. Yeah, yeah. I but mean, when you go in there, you just see those things. It doesn't mean anything to so, it. So it's, they're not going to, okay. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. It's going to be. I know that when well, they see a button, it's oh, you know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I've heard some horror stories already. <laughs> I, I tell you, I know that you guys, you, you love the library, and that's why you yeah. work here. And you also mm -hmm. want to serve people, that's why you work here. But I also know that serving in yeah. a public library yeah. can sometimes be very difficult with the people you have to deal with. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I understand that it's difficult sometimes, but we just do what we yeah. can with what we got. Yeah. Okay? All right. Brightness is the brightness of the screen, oh, okay. not the brightness of your coffees. And these are little gas gauges for your okay. color uh, toners. Mm -hmm. As the toner mm -hmm. goes down, you'll see the little gas okay. gauge go down as well. Okay. When the toner gets real little, let's pretend okay. my magenta toner is just about out. I'll see a message up here that says, replace toner M for magenta when mm -hmm. indicated meaning you still have a few days, but mm -hmm. it's giving you a heads up, a little warning. If you don't have backup toner, you better get some, mm -hmm. okay? But we want to leave it in there right now because it's not empty yet. So yeah. a few days go by, and then the machine, this message changes. It says, uh -oh. replace toner now, and then it's time to really do Is it. Is there a cartridge for the toner? Okay. Yes, I'll oh. show you. Oh, okay. So, but our guy's going to handle that. So good. as I oh, mentioned, good. Okay. Thank you. our guy's going to come around. He's going to add, it's once or twice a week, I believe. Okay. okay. He's going to add paper, change the toners if need be, going to check the physical, mm -hmm. uh, make sure the machine is okay physically and fix anything or call for a technician to fix it if something is broken or damaged or whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So those are the kind of things. The only thing that I think that we want to make this trouble free for you. Yeah. So the only thing you're going to have to do probably once yeah. in a while is add paper. Because okay. he's only going to be out once in a while and maybe oh, somebody yeah. goes through the whole stack and yeah. say one then yeah. you're going to have to add yeah. paper. And we'll, yeah. I'll show you that briefly, okay? Yeah. okay. All right, let me see here. Time to go scanning to email. Mm -hmm. We've been in copy mode the whole time. I go to fax mm -hmm. and scan. Okay, scanning. We'll start with one touch buttons. These little buttons here. I created a dummy one that's got my name on it with a phony email address. Mm -hmm. Called a one touch button. So I touch that button. It turns green, meaning Greg has been selected as the destination for the email. I put in my documents face up, just like I'm making copies. I put the, normally this would be blue. I push mm -hmm. start. It scans it. Greg receives it in his email inbox. Mm -hmm. If we had more than one touch, one one yeah. touch button, I could select more. Mm -hmm. It still scan once, but it goes out to everybody I selected. Mm -hmm. Okay. If we're going to allow the patrons to email out to themselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in that case, what you do, when you hit mm -hmm. reset, they go to fax and scan. They go to direct input. Mm -hmm. They choose email. The keyboard comes oh, yeah. up. Whenever you see a keyboard on the machines, there's always an enlarge button down here. Oh, okay. no, that's right. good. So that's then the patron hard. or you types in the email address. Mm -hmm. There's a little hint, and yeah. the at key is behind number two. So shift. I want to go to uppercase. Mm -hmm. There's the at key, oh, that and we key. keep going. Okay. So then they type in their email address. They tell it okay. All right. So far, so good. However, if these documents that I want to send out or they want to send out are double-sided, we have to do an extra step. Mm -hmm. Scan settings in the lower left. This is the most important button out of all of them, I think. Mm -hmm. Simplex, mm -hmm. duplex. Remember, okay. single-sided, mm -hmm. double-sided? Mm -hmm. It tells you on the little button it's defaulted to scanning one side of the page mm -hmm. only. Okay. Mm -hmm. If these are double-sided, I need to go in there and tell them my pages are two-sided. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now, regardless of whether I give it one page or 100 pages, which is the maximum, yeah. mm -hmm. it's going to scan both sides of each page and uh, send them out as one file. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Next most important button, I think, is document name right here. So let's okay. touch this. Here's our friend, the keyboard. Let's enlarge it. This is the name the machine wants to give to this document. Mm -hmm. Buried in here is today's date. Mm -hmm. Every time it sends out a scan, only the last two numbers change. Everything mm -hmm. else stays the same. Mm -hmm. So this scan would be number 70. The one after that would be number 80, etc. 
If you do a lot of scanning to yourself, pretty soon these names all start to look the same. So we give you an option of renaming the document before you send it. Clear key erases that, and that's why we have the keyboard here. Now you can rename the document anything you want up to 30 characters long. Okay? So single-sided, double-sided document name, file type. It's defaulted to a multi-page PDF, which is going to be good for most business uses mm -hmm. or most general uses. Mm -hmm. <coughs> There's going to be times they want another file type, but I want to tell you this. Mm -hmm. Because we're scanning and sending out via email, we have to be concerned with file size. Most email servers have a 10 meg limit. Any file that's over 10 megs won't let it go through. It's too big. If I have 100 pages here and we're scanning both sides and they're full color, it's possible this file will be too large. Okay. If that is the case, you can choose Compact PDF instead. Mm. Compresses the file down to about one-third of the size of normal PDF. Okay? You could also send it out as a TIFF, very old-fashioned file type. This is more like mm -hmm. the line drawings and architectural mm -hmm. drawings and stuff. Two versions of XPS, regular and compact. XPS is Microsoft's version of PDF. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people have heard of it, but it's there if you want to. And JPEG. Mm -hmm. One image in JPEG, one image equals one file. So if I have three pages and I want to send it to myself as JPEGs, I have a choice of sending out one email with three attachments, one per page, or sending out three emails with one attachment mm -hmm. each. Either way, just send them out to me. That's how you get around the limitation of JPEG. I want to draw your attention to the fact I cannot save these documents as a Word file or an Excel file. These are just different types of images only. Mm -hmm. Each of these is a different form of saving an image, regardless of whether it's a photograph, or text, it's mm -hmm. still an image. Mm -hmm. And this is going to apply when we get to uh, opening in uh, documents uh, from a thumb yeah. drive, a USB oh, port okay. drive. I'll show mm -hmm. you about that. Next button, density, is how light or dark your scans are. You won't know this until you try it a couple of times. There's no way to preview it. But if you put in some documents, maybe there's some forms, every time you receive them, they're a little on the light side, you can go in there and darken them up before you send them out. Auto color. Now, we charge you and you charge your patrons for scanning, pardon me, for printing or copying in color. Mm -hmm. But we do not charge you and you're not going to charge your patrons for scanning. Mm -hmm. Scanning the email, no charge. Mm -hmm. So we might as well leave it on color. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. What the heck? Yeah. It's no charge, might as well leave it on color. No big deal there. Okay? Resolution. It's defaulted to 200 by 200 DPI dots per square inch, which is a pretty decent resolution for most things. If you zoom in on your uh, PDF file, a document five or six times, then maybe you start to see a little pixelization around the edges of the text, but it's going to be pretty clear. Mm -hmm. You can choose a higher resolution if you want for your documents, but just be aware of that because we're concerned with file size. Uh, every time you do that, it dramatically increases the file size real quick. Mm -hmm. 200 by 200 DPI, I think 200 by 200 is 40,000, so we have 40,000 dots mm -hmm. per square inch. 300 by 300 is 90,000 dots per square inch. So if this were a 10 meg file, this would be about a 22 meg file. Really big, real quick. Okay, so just be aware of that. Last thing, image type. It's defaulted to text and photo. It's going to be good for most uses. You could choose text. It will crisp it up a little bit. If you choose photo, it actually smooths the image out so it's a little more pleasing to the eye. This other feature here, dot matrix original. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far mm -hmm. away, used to be dot matrix printouts, and usually they come out very faint. Mm -hmm. right. Now you want to make a copy of that. Copy machines always had trouble with that. So what we're doing is we're telling the machine my original is very faint. So it dramatically increases the contrast so that you get a better copy mm -hmm. or a better scan than you would otherwise. It's not perfect. If you've got little schmutz on your paper, little dots, mm -hmm. you're going to get those increased too. Mm -hmm. But it's better than it would have been otherwise. Those are your basic features there. Last thing I do want to show you, pretty much for your edification is these other ones I want to encourage with because I don't have time to go through everything, but in application there's a feature called send and print. When I touch this, the idea is I can send the document out but also have it print out one or more sets at the same time. Okay, So that's what send and print is. And send and print you find in application. All right. There's only two fax machines that are going to be set up as fax machines and they're here in the public library. If we review it right now, you won't remember it a week or two from now anyway, and you're not mm -hmm. going to be using them, so let's, if you don't mind, we're going to okay. skip that part. Okay. All right, thumb drive. 